my soup right now I'm in my two hour window. <laughs> Hey, Wendy, can you hear me? Oops, I can't hear you for some reason. Are you on mute? Let's just see. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm very good, how are you? Good. So I know that we're just a little early here, but we are live on Facebook right now. So I just wanna let you know that because we're just testing out some stuff, okay? Sure. Is, is that okay for you? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, just trying to adjust our cameras and everything in here. I think Melissa also sent you um, an agenda. She did. So I think that there were some items on there um, that maybe, are you going to talk about some of Ken's stuff too, maybe? Yeah, I can certainly do that. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, I'm going to um, come off for a couple seconds, but you'll be on here. So if you want to just put up your other page, you know what I mean? Like your, your, uh, not have your video going sure. It's up to you until we go, it's up to you if you want to be sitting there, but we are live. Nope, on that's fine. I'll, I'll change it. <laughs> All right. We'll be back soon. Okay. Now, Wendy's here. Oh, 
I like that picture. Hey, John. John. John, can you hear me? that may be on the agenda Sharon, can you hear me? i can hear you now yep we're okay. live on facebook just so you know sounds good okay i've got justin singing out with traffic so uh, we'll go to you just after the news all right perfect thank you so I think, uh, john we'll go to you uh once christine calls for you and article five is a capital improvement plan it's additional capital items that went on it really is the annual town meeting like a trucker. i'm going to consider at the special town meeting and the capital budget committee will be in for put that forward Town Administrator Jim Boudreau telling WATD News there'll also be a hearing regarding a liquor license violation for Village Market. So we have a potential liquor license violation at Village Market. The police department did a sting down there. Allegedly, Village Market sold alcohol to an underage patron. So the police department will be in presenting that evidence to the board, and the board will be hearing that tonight to determine what penalty, if any, should be imposed on the Village Market. And tonight's select board meeting in Situate begins as we speak, 6 o'clock. That's at Situate Town Hall. A real estate numbers continue to look strong the plymouth county registry of deeds for the high level of activity as we move into the fall season well certainly with low interest rates continuing we've continued to have very strong recording numbers in august our deeds went higher than july 1026 sales of property recorded although there were slightly less than last august numbers are still very strong plymouth county Register of deeds john buckley says an expert was quoted as saying the strength is in part of the u.s housing market being driven by the covid pandemic as potential buyers move from urban apartments to suburban homes we'll be back with traffic next in times of change one thing is certain the south shore ymca remains a place for you a place where you and your family can get healthy and fit a place to connect with friends to play to 
unwind to enjoy. A place where people care about your well-being and support your community. The South Shore YMCA offers 100 group fitness classes, indoor cycling and Pilates reformer training studios, basketball courts, tennis courts, indoor swimming pools, yoga, Zumba, and so much more. There's a million things for you and your family to explore. And for household members, the South Shore YMCA even offers free on-site babysitting while mom and dad enjoy a workout. Find the place where you belong. Join the South Shore YMCA in Hanover or yeah, Quincy Christine. and be a part of a community that cares. The better you belongs here at the South Shore YMCA. Visit SSYMCA.org to learn more. 609 here on 95.9. Time to take a look at traffic again. That means it's time to check in with John Willis. What's happening out in the commute tonight, John? Thanks, Christine. Well, this report is sponsored by Unbound.org. We are still slow on the expressway southbound. That long, slow ride continues from the tunnel down to South Bay and, and also Granite Ave to the split. Northbound side, you're stalled out. 24 up past Deposit Circle. Wendy. After that, you are okay up into the tunnel. Three southbound, stop and go coming off the expressway. Yep. And you're back up to speed after um, Route 18, 128 you southbound. Take, if you want to take, tough it's up to you if you want to have that live or not. In Canton, and 95 uh, southbound, but, um, a little struggle there, 140 are down Are you still lieutenant? Or did you, 44 you, moving well. Middleborough, Plymouth, lieutenant. 17 minutes, lieutenant 95 to Route Lapierre, 3. Right? A girl in Correct. Kenya dreams of becoming Lapierre. a doctor, okay. an elder in Guatemala sure dreams of being part of a community. And you are friends with Jeff, what is his name? At Unbound. Kale, so whatever that just brought up. Good morning, I'm John Willis in WA. Thank you, John. Well, we see your background. Sports brought to you by the Care Center of the South Shore. You just go into your background. Short time and per diem nurses and nursing assistants for all shifts. Contact them directly or visit lifecarecareers.com. Hi, I'm Kathy Beam, Director of Community Relations and Patient Experience at Life Care right, Center of the South Shore. We're live on We'd like to take Hello this to opportunity to thank our surrounding communities for their unwavering support during these difficult times and to let you know that we are here for you should the need arise. Life Care Center of the South Shore has earned three deficiency-free infection control surveys from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health in the past six months. And we will continue to maintain and exceed the highest standards of infection prevention while the world wrestles with this global pandemic. All of us here at Life Care wish you good health and safety in these trying times. But should the need arise, you can place your trust in us. Life Care Center of the South Shore on the Driftway in Situate. Call me, Kathy Beam, at 781-545-1370 for more information. That's 781-545-1370. Life Care Center of the South Shore, doing whatever it takes and then some. And it's 611 here on 95.9 and sports. The Red Sox host the New York Mets tonight. That is at 710. Meteorologist Rob Gilman's latest forecast sponsored by the clean team, carpet upholstery, tile or ground. If you're worried the stain won't come out, call the clean team. I'm Rachel from The Clean Team. You've heard me and my sister Sarah do commercials about the messes we make and how The Clean Team can get rid of stains we've left behind. I'm Sarah. This year, kids and parents alike are celebrating the end of virtual school and the return of back to school. Now that you've returned to the office and the kids are returning to school, wouldn't this be a great time to have The Clean Team give your carpets, upholstery, tile, and grout a deep cleaning? Those juice stains on the sofa, coffee drips on the rug, and dirt and sand ground into the tile floor would no longer be there to remind you of the year of remote work and virtual classes. You can also drop off your area rugs and outdoor cushions for an end of summer deep cleaning. We're right down the street in Kingston, open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Call the clean team now to schedule a free in-home consultation, 781-585-4678, 781-585-4678. For more info, go to thecleanteam.net. Call the clean team. That's all right. I pressure that. No hard saddles tonight. Chamber of Commerce weather here on the south. No hard saddles tonight. Few days. No hard what? Now shifting. Hard ciders. Out away hard ciders, no. <laughs> you want to bring Atlantic, us some? <laughs> and that's going to allow for more humidity to move up it's from some the south. Yeah, it's some tequila. Some tequila. Tonight, it's some tequila shots going in here, John. Come join us. Sure. Mm. John, how I've missed you so. Last week, um, George had a problem getting our call over. I have 75. It can be so a hot shower later you're tomorrow pretty, you're, night. You know how to do that. Muggy right? in the mid upper 60s right into Thursday. We won't have a problem with that. High of 75, even a little warmer we around through, Boston. Though. We had her call Friday, my cell phone and went held my cell phone up to the microphone. getting closer, <laughs> a shower or some rain at times with thunder around the high 73. 
For WATD, I'm meteorologist Rob Gilman. 70 degrees out there, 613. That's local news. I'm Christine James. Stay tuned for Sharon McNamara. Talk real estate right here, 95.9 WATD. Love the way she says Talk my name. Real Estate with Sharon McNamara. Sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. Hi, I'm Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique real estate firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing consultants who service home buyers and home sellers no, throughout Boston, you. the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my real estate team member, Mary Baker, and I, along with the director of Boston... Which is what you make. If you each want to give me a countdown on the mic so, so I can check the level. Test, test, test. He wants you to test. Can you put your headphones on? We like to mix it up sometimes. So not only will you hear our perspective on real estate topics, but you will hear the expert thoughts Keep and going. opinions of some test, of our test, real estate test, one, agents two, at Boston three, Connect Real Estate test, and the professional Do you need help getting Millie home? Be part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please okay, call that work. one 837 We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you listen to podcasts. About 20 seconds. Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Great. Thank you, John. If you would like a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me and my team. And it's been a while. You don't do traffic anymore, right? Boston we do no. not. No, no, no commercials, no anything. You so we like to interact. So if you interact, interact with us, we'd love that. Sure. Right. Perfect. Now sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all our South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable with Boston Connect Real Estate's broker team. My name is Melissa Wallace, and I am joined in studio tonight with my team members, Sharon McNamara and Mary Baker. Hello, hello. Hello. Mary's laughing at me. Because <laughs> you get so excited when we go yeah, live. Yeah, she really like, does like, cut, cut I just, me up. Like, I, I don't know how she does that. It's like, we're all sitting here like, oh, I'm exhausted. And we like, literally oh, no. were all just complaining. I'm so tired. I almost sent Sharon a text message this morning. I wrote it out and everything after. I got out of the shower. I'm like, I think I'm just going to lay back down. I'm like, I'm just really <laughs> tired. And then I just deleted it. I'm like, I just have to man up and just get, get ready yeah. and come in. One foot, woman, up, up. woman up, woman up, well, maybe tomorrow. I'll send that text. <laughs> I'm already tired tomorrow, but <laughs> um, at least I have a head start. I'll know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are joined tonight by a very special guest. I believe she joined us before though. Yes. Right. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, tonight we doesn't are... make her any less special. No, no, she is. <laughs> She is the one, the only um, Lieutenant. And I don't want to say your last name wrong, but it's Lieutenant LaPierre. Correct. Sorry? Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, from the Pembroke Police Department. Um, I don't want, I want to uh, uh, introduce her like properly. I like, I don't want to, I know yeah. we've been calling her by her first name, but I want to like say like, yeah. oh, Lieutenant. LaPierre. Is that how we should refer to you as a Lieutenant? I, I or Wendy. That you prefer more. Wendy? Okay, she prefers Wendy. Yeah. Can we call you Lieutenant Lieutenant Wendy? Because I, you know, Wendy. you earned your title. I feel like oh, we yeah. could give it to you. <laughs> so, um, we we're also uh, supposed to be joined tonight by Chief uh, McCormick. He's the chief of the yeah. fire department. Uh, but you know, now that he's chief, he has you know he gets called out on duty, so he uh, wasn't able to make it. Uh, tonight, but um, I know that Lieutenant Wendy is going to help us uh, with some of the safety things we want to talk about when it comes to fire safety. So, yeah. Um, but Lieutenant Lapierre, if you could just tell us a little bit more about you, because I know the last time I'm not going to lie. I think that I think Ken McCormick stole the show. Chief McCormick stole the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can say whatever we want about him tonight because he's not here. Uh, no, but he is a doll. But if you could just tell us a little bit about you and, you know, how long you've been with the department and, you know, how you've grown to lieutenant. I know that you are very, very well respected in our community. I've been here for 29 years and it's always nice when you hear nice things about our people who are in rank, I guess, and in charge. And it's, it's so nice that uh, you are there. I think that, um, you know, one day we want you to be captain, but we'll talk to you about that another day <laughs> 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 or the chief or something, right? <laughs> well, well, thank you. Um, so Wendy, um, I've been here for a little over 23 years. Wow. I've been a Lieutenant since 2018. Prior to that, I was a Sergeant and I spent uh, almost 15 years in patrol. Um, I work days and nights and I have, I'm in charge of grants, um, the detective unit, 
schools and uh it's about all I do <laughs> yeah that's all I do which that is just like about, a handful just about everything <laughs> is on that list so um so tonight we wanted to uh talk about back to school safety I know the past couple of weeks you have probably been very busy um you know your capacity with working with the schools and everything so we just wanted to really reach out it isn't just for Pembroke even though that's where uh, Lieutenant LaPierre is from um it's for all towns mm-hmm. in general so to all of our WAT listeners and then Mel do you want to let our listeners also know about where we are on Facebook and how they can get questions to us and Lieutenant Wendy. So we are live on Facebook. If you are friends with Sharon Costa McNamara, you can see us, but it is also shared on our team page, McNamara Broker Team, Boston Connect Real Estate. If you're a member of any of the Connect pages, so Pembroke Connect, Hanover Connect, Marshfield Connect, all those fun pages, Mm -hmm. um, you can see us there. You can interact with us on, uh, you know, our our little live there. Um, Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can give us a call at the studio, Mm -hmm. 70. 1-827-4900. one eight two seven four nine zero zero. Yeah, we have John Shea with us this evening. So hello, John. Hello. 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 Yeah, John. Happy nice fall. Yeah, we have John tonight. So um, give John Lucky a call, us. and yes. yeah, um, he'll he'll get you to us mm-hmm. and, and to <laughs> Lieutenant Wendy. Just to put corrections, eight three seven. I know. I said I thought of that afterwards, and I was like, I don't think John's going to correct me, but you did. So yes. there we go. <laughs> so the phone number to the studio is seven eight one eight three seven four nine zero zero. And as I said, John uh, is in studio, and he'll get you over to us with any questions. So yeah. feel free to do that. I've only been saying it for five years. But here we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Hey, it's been one of those days. <clears throat> one of those days. Yes. So I know getting back into the process of it's it's probably been a lot actually, Wendy, because. Because, you know, we were in COVID for so long that now it's almost like back to school for the first time in two years. Exactly. So do you want to tell us a little bit? Oh, Mel, why don't you take it? Because you have the agenda right there. Like what you want, what topics you wanted to start with first? Um, yeah. So I know uh, Sharon had talked to Ken about sort of you guys coming on and, and getting sort of in, back into the swing of things. When Ken was on with Lisa Cullity um, a couple of weeks ago, they talked about, you know, is this going to be the quote unquote, like normalcy that we're sort of used to with the whole masks and everything. So we'll sort of stay away from that part, but more of like, you know, traveling to school, is it, I know that in some towns there's, you know, bus driver shortages and stuff. So like, are we seeing anything different in, in sort of that line of pickup and drop-offs? Um, so uh, we do see quite a bit of traffic, um, coming in and out of all of the schools. Um, I can't speak to how much, um, different it was from two years ago, but there is quite a bit of traffic. Um, a couple of differences, they, the bus drivers have to drive with the windows down now. Um, kids are obviously oh. masked. How's that going to work in the winter? Yeah. I think the same way it did, uh, you know, last year when they went back to school, um, you know, they just have to be down a certain amount and just dress for the weather. Bundle mm-hmm. up. Bundle mm-hmm. up. Everybody gets a scarf as they get on board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't noticed that I've been actually, so where I live, I watch the school bus kind of come down while I walk the dogs. And I noticed that everybody's wearing a mask, the bus driver, the kids that are getting on and everything, but I haven't noticed that the windows are down. I'll have to pay attention to that. Yep. They absolutely should be down. Yeah. I just haven't, I'm not saying they're not. I just haven't, right. seen, I just haven't noticed it. <laughs> I'm not like, Mary's like tattling on the Pembroke Mary, school system. Mary's your newest Mary. knock at the Pembroke Police Department. Maybe I just thought, I was like, oh, it must be hot in there. It's been nice like weather recently. Yeah. So yeah, interesting. So uh, are we, do you know, uh, do we have a shortage? I don't even, this isn't in your, but we just sort of put it, uh, any questions out there. You may not know the answer to this, but do we have a shortage of bus drivers? I've been seeing that on the news. Um, So I'm not sure if we have um, permanent bus drivers, but it doesn't seem like it's been a problem here. I I drive by the schools um, every morning at seven and it looks like the same amount as previous years. Mm -hmm. And we have complaints, so. Okay. I want it's doing well. I mm-hmm. wonder if there's a whole group of people that aren't putting their kids on the buses anymore, though, that are just actually dropping them off or physically bringing them to school. I don't know. With like working from Maybe home. Maybe if they're working from home, they're able they might to have do more flexibility now. to do that. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know. I don't have children. Neither do you. <laughs> and neither do I. <laughs> and apparently I'm not that observant. So I haven't noticed how many people are on the bus. <laughs> um, okay. So maybe like on the lines of traveling, you know, to school, what are your sort of top travel tips for safety when it comes to either taking the bus or riding a bike, right? Like walking to school, sort of, we can go through that. I was researching this earlier. So I have, um, if you look at my agenda, you can look, <laughs> look at all that little fun stuff. Cause I did learn something new, which I'll bring it up later. But. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. So sure. Um, it's a walking to school. We obviously want them to walk against traffic on a sidewalk if possible. They need to look both ways. If they're crossing in a crosswalk, make sure that um, they look at the operators of vehicles going both ways to make sure they see them. Um, if they're riding a bike, again, make sure they're on the proper side of the road, wear a helmet, wear reflective gear. Um, driving to school, this is um, especially for the kids that are driving to school. If they're new drivers, if they're junior operators within the first six months, absolutely no passengers unless they're um, siblings. Oh. Um, they can lose their license for a certain amount of time. There's fines. Um, speeding, if you're a junior operator, you lose your license. No, go. Um, don't do that. Mm -hmm. No, don't, mm -mm. don't do no. that. Um, also, the texting and driving, we all have to be careful with that. Even the um, talking while on uh, while driving, if it's not hands-free. Yeah, what are the rules yeah, on that? Rules Can you tell, that? tell me what the rules are on that? Because I have hands-free, so I don't even know what the rules are. Not so much maybe even texting, but like talking on the phone, like how, like where should your phone be? <laughs> Obviously not in your hand. <laughs> that's, but like, that's, but I always get nervous. Is that, a, like, is that, you're not supposed to have it up no. to your ear? You're not supposed to hold it to your ear no. anymore? No, that, that oh. it's all as of I believe April 1st 2020 oh yeah it's all it's all hands-free so you can't like make a phone call no nope. you have how do you dial it if you can't touch you it? talk well, to it yeah you can you can talk you, the newer hey, car um you know you make the phone call before you leave where you're at mm -hmm. and you can talk but you just can't have anything in your hands mm -hmm. should Ooh. be on um speaker through like apple play or whatnot I have to get like a better system in my car then because every time I say call so and so it's like oh this person no nope, not somebody oh, that yeah. I haven't talked to in 20 years <laughs> no thanks yeah you know what I have to tell you my daughter Casey uh she now um you know recently passed the bar and is working for a big law firm in the city and um she she got busted she she was a junior operator and she had friends in her she car busted. and she got busted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine got busted with me in the no, car. No, but the cops, but no, like I had a mother and that was oh, worse than oh, getting busted oh. by the cops. <laughs> we got busted by the cops in Medford and I had to walk home. Oh, yeah. It wasn't fun. Yeah, that, that, this, was, even, this was 16 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so here's another thing too, is I know like my daughter, my daughter Mackenzie, so she's 25 now. You know, I'm wondering if this is going to be an issue for, you know, because the kids who just got their license last year and then they weren't driving back and forth to school. So they were home. So they didn't really have a lot of practice. Right. Uh -huh. So when they get that first snowfall, a lot of them aren't going to be familiar with driving in the snow. That's what happened to my daughter, Mackenzie. Her class didn't have a lot of experience driving in the snow because there was no snow the year before. Mm -hmm. So it was as soon as it snowed, they were cars all over the place. That's a little nerve wracking. Right. Yeah. So, um, I don't, I, I'm 32 and I don't like to drive in the snow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of snow last year. So, you know, we just want everybody to be careful this upcoming year. Yep. All right. Uh, also school buses. Like, um, I can't stress enough how important it is to stop, uh, for school buses when the, you know, somebody's letting a kid off or getting on. That's a two hundred and fifty-five dollar fine. If you, do you think that uh, should be more? I think it should be more. I saw something I horrifying oh, on yeah, the, the video the other day. Yeah, what scary. Was what was the video? The video yeah. was somebody a UPS uh, truck, right? Oh yeah, I saw that the other yeah. day. That was scary. That was very scary. Yeah, don't um, try to pass it. Feet away from the back of a bus as well. That's a forty dollar fine if you, um, you know if you're tailgating a bus, so you need to stay at least a hundred feet away. Well, yeah, because what if there's an emergency? Don't they use the back hatch to get out? They do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the back door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had to escape I, that one. Can I <laughs> ask, have you ever, has anybody really ever gotten a ticket for any of these things? Like, well, I'm, I'm sure people have. Course. Yeah. I mean, there's fines for a reason. Mm -hmm. come Cross hatch, right? up, um, failing to stop. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we seem to be breaking up a little bit when she's talking and we're talking. So we're going to give you more space to do more of your talking. Okay. So go, keep on going with the bike ride. Well, one thing too, though, I know, I'm sorry, we're getting new sidewalks. No, I'm talking about, you know, dry, and she was talking about like, make sure you walk against the traffic. But when I used to go running and I would run against the traffic and there were no sidewalks on 27, there are a lot of, okay, not just 
females, but what I encountered were a lot of females put mascara on while they drive in their car. And when they look up, they're like, oh, I'm on the side of the road. And so are you. So I don't even know. Is it even like, do you really even let your kid, do people even, I grew up on Dorchester Ave. I can't even believe I'm asking this question, but do they let their kids just walk up 27 to go to school, to go to Bryanville? You know, I don't see a lot of elementary kids walking to school, but I do see kids walking across 27 to get to the middle school in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so that's you should, dangerous. You should always be facing the traffic because at least you have a fighting chance to get out of the way. If you see somebody coming at you, otherwise they're going to hit you from behind. Yeah. Okay. That's mm-hmm. good advice. I, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I think that's even more prevalent than walking with biking. I see it all the time coming up Mattachusett street. And it's just because that's where I live that the kids, kids are on bikes on the opposite side. And I'm like, you can't see me. I can't get around you. And there's somebody swerving from the other side, like kids go against like, go against the traffic when you're riding your bike, seriously. Cause it scared me once or twice, especially now that we're getting into fall and winter where it's darker for long periods of time Mm -hmm. now. So it's the weird, the, where the reflective things like, um, you know, when I was growing up, everyone had like something like reflective on their backpacks that like walk to school in the middle of the winter. Cause Mm -hmm. we, like, I, I always used to walk when I was in high school or when I was in middle school, like we (laughs) didn't take the bus. Like we always walk, we had to walk. So everyone always had something on them because it was pitch dark when we would leave for school in the morning. So in like our audience tonight, so again, you're listening to uh, WATD uh, Talk Real Estate with Sharon McNamara and our team here, Mary Baker and Melissa Wallace. And we are very fortunate tonight to have Lieutenant Wendy LaPierre with us from the uh, Pembroke Police Department. Uh, Ken McCormick uh, Chief was not able to join us tonight. He had a meeting. Uh, so we just like to give some safety tips and some. that's what we wanted our conversation to be about tonight as school gets back in order. But I wonder, you know, the audience tonight, we don't have the kids listening so hopefully we have some of the parents but do you go into the schools and give these tips to the kids Uh, you know what we haven't been in the schools um because of covid and um honestly we do have a um a school resource officer officer kirby Mm -hmm. and i I don't think he gets up and talks about this but that is kind of a good idea yeah but you go to driver's ed and they should be learning this at driver's ed Mm mm-hmm well, because that's another thing, too, is if you have new junior drivers on their way to school at the same time that kids are walking to school, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You have to sort of be paying attention. So, OK. All right. Did you have other tips, too? I see you're looking at some stuff there. Um, I think that's, a, you know, basically just obey the speed limits. I mean, um, and pay attention. That's the, the, the biggest thing. Um, mm mm-hmm. Some, something I'll, I'll be honest, something that I, that I sort of catch myself doing sometimes is that if I'm going through the same streets and everything, I get very familiar and very comfortable. And I don't, I, I guess I don't pay attention to the speed limit because I felt like, oh, I've driven this road 10,000 times. But if somebody was to ask me, oh, what's the speed limit on this street? I'd be like, oh, I don't know. And they'd be like, well, that's a school zone. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So it's like you get comfortable sort of just with you sort of get your, your commute, your yeah. commute. So you don't really pay attention, but you really should. And that's something that I need to be more aware of is because, you know, I, I get nervous. Like mm-hmm. if, if I like think that, oh my gosh, am I speeding? Like all of a sudden mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, you sort of get into a daze sometimes when you drive, you know, and yeah, you need to snap out of you it, need to like... snap out of it. But I think paying attention to the school zones, obviously, um, you know, because they used to have like flashing lights. Do they have flashing lights still? I think the middle school does. <laughs> yeah, the middle school has, uh, 20 miles an hour. Um, yeah. On 20, but I believe that um, the high school in Hob Market kind of off the main road. So mm-hmm. there is there, but it's still, I would observe the 20 miles yeah. an hour. Mm-hmm. And two, I just, I, there's a lot of construction going on right now in Pembroke, right on 36. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that that's really important too, that people are paying attention. I mean, I know that we're talking about back to school safety, but in general, I just feel like people need to slow down because if you're going to be late for your appointment, you're going to be late for your appointment. You just have to sort of either plan better and be prepared for traffic. Like I had a doctor's appointment today in Weymouth and I was so proud of myself because I was like, I have just given myself 50 minutes to probably go 25 minute ride. And I said, maybe I'll hit some traffic. I was five minutes late. 
Like, so you just even never like know. Yeah, I would because leave this... right now if I had to drive to Weymouth. There's nothing but traffic there. <laughs> did, did you hit school buses? On, on I, the hit, way? I hit school buses. Yeah. I got behind somebody who obviously didn't know where he was going. And I hit road construction. Yeah. 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 But you know what? I got myself worked up and I was like, there isn't a flipping thing I can do about this right now, unless I, I can get my new buses. car to fly over all of this. So I think being patient is a really good you know, a, a really good tip for people as well, especially when you are getting behind a school bus, because I will say it out loud. It is frustrating that a school bus stops at every other house. Why don't, why don't they have bus stops? <laughs> like, you know, so, right. You know what I'm talking about. You all know it. So okay. is it, and I'm curious about that. Is that still something with drop off? So I know, um, I don't have kids in the school systems yet, but I have my nieces and nephews that were going to Bryantville when they were dropping off in the driveways, somebody had to physically be in the driveway to get them. Is that still, do you know if that's still a thing with the schools? I believe kindergarten, there has to be somebody out there, but I'm not sure about other, um, other ages. Yeah. Yeah, They were like Mm -hmm. third and fourth. And I remember I was terrified that I wasn't going to be there on time because auntie runs about 10 minutes late to everything that she's doing. Mm -hmm. And I just made it as they were coming around the corner. Mm. I was like, I'm here. Don't worry. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Yeah. You got to be there. But I think (laughs) (laughs) you got to get the kid off the bus. Well, well, no, that at some point was a safety is, is, or was a safety concern for kids in the elementary school systems going home without a parent being in attendance Mm -hmm. or somebody being there to pick them up. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking about that. Um, Something that I learned about the school bus. This is my fun fact. Oh, I learned fun to fact. Say. Yeah. Um, and it totally makes sense. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. Uh, you, when uh, the, your child and the bus driver should always be able to make eye contact. So when it's past, when you're crossing the street, so like when the child gets off the bus, they have to be a certain distance from the bus so they can have eye contact from the bus driver. So the bus driver should always be able to see the kid. I, th- I learned that today on the internet and that makes sense to me. Well, so I've seen- <laughs> never thought of it before. <laughs> I've actually seen that in play where they're, they're stopped. So the bus driver is stopped and the kids are crossing in front, not in, yeah. in, in behind, but they're crossing far enough in front that the bus driver is basically saying, Hey, no, 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 stop. Cause yeah. somebody's being a jerk behind me or well, they have their stop or- sign and they're clearly not paying attention. They're yeah. trying to pass a school bus, but Who that's, that's the purpose school for it. Bus. I don't, I've seen it. It wasn't me. I saw it on the news. UPS driver. Yeah. He is probably mm. fired. Mm. <laughs> You're fired. I don't think the union can save him on that one. Um, okay. So are there any other tips that you want to give to parents who may be listening or uh, maybe they have their kids in the car and they are going off to sports and things like that when it comes to walking or getting back and forth to school? Uh, just, just be careful and make sure that uh, if you're walking, that the car sees you before you cross the street. I mean, it's just so important. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the buddy system when you're walking to and from school? Oh, buddy system is so important too. Um, just yeah. having two people or three, it, it's yeah. just safer. Well, walking just- it, walking in a group in general, mm-hmm. I feel like, especially on our, on some of our roads, you'll have the ability to be able to see them better if they're in, in a group. And two, I watch a lot of, or listen to a lot of yeah. motor podcasts. Yeah. That's um, where I'm going right now. I mean, we don't want to scare the kids because they might be listening, but yeah, I'm not saying anybody's kidnappings, ever did, but it's true. It's just, it, you're safer in numbers. Girlfriends mm-hmm. don't leave, girl, leave girlfriends out at bars. Mm-hmm. Ergo don't walk alone by yourself anywhere. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing that must be hard, Lieutenant Wendy, is that there is like that certain age where they feel as if they are invincible. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I'm thinking of like, maybe like middle age girls, yep. right? Middle school age girls, you know what I mean? Where it's, you know, it's, yeah. you know, walking, I have seen some of these girls walking down the street and I was like, her mother obviously didn't see her walk out the door <laughs> or she changed her clothes in the shed because there's no way, you know what I mean? But it's just like finding themselves or whatever, yeah. you know? But it's so dangerous. I mean, that 22 year old, well, oh, she was yeah, with her Gabby. fiance, but um, it's really abductions. I and mean, I don't think we've ever really had a problem here in Pembroke. Have we with abductions or anything like that at the school bus? Uh, not, not in the past 24 years now. <laughs> All right, good. That's because you're there. So right. you got us protected. You're, you guys are doing what you need to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
um, that's all I had for the safety getting, getting to and from go back to school, to and fro, to and fro. Um, but one of the things too, just on that whole, you know, the abduction thing, I'll just bring this up just to bring a little real estate into this. You are listening to talk real estate roundtable. If you have any questions for us though, John Che is at the studio 781-837-4900. Or you can send us a message on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook as well. Uh, Any questions that you might have tonight about safety or real estate, uh, please give us a jingle. But, um, and Wendy, I might've said this to you before is that, so I've been in the real estate industry for 21 years. I've had Boston connect. It will be 11 years, October 10th. And I've never put children's bedroom photos in any of my listings because the internet is free. And I just remembered like when my kids were younger, like that's when LL Bean, everything was monogrammed and put your kids like, and that was the big thing. Don't put your kids' names on their, their backpacks just because of stranger danger. And that's the reason why, like maybe I'm over the top, but I never wanted to add pictures because you can tell if it's a little girl with a pink comforter and, you know, princess stuff mm-hmm. or a little boy with chains. So maybe I'm a little over the top, but I think that that's safety too, because the internet's free. Right. Right. So listen to some of the podcasts that I listen to and you won't think you're over the top anymore. I'm just saying, do we have a department that just sort of, or do you have a department within your department that monitors what is going on on like, like Facebook and I, you, someone has to be on Pembroke connect. I created it. And the thing is a nightmare. There are times when it's, you know, there's, it's good sometimes. And sometimes it's just really bad, mm-hmm. but do we have somebody that like takes care of that type of stuff? Like, you, I'm trying to think of like with these young girls and meeting up with boys and just like taking off. Yeah. So we do, we have, we have, um, we have Kevin Doyle who is um, going to be a sergeant next month. He is in charge of, um, of our website, but usually we, before we even find anything, somebody has um, contacted us because there are people, I mean, we can't monitor the site 24 seven. So we, we get things all the time from vigilant, uh, you know, people on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. We, I do too, by the way. <laughs> so, all right. Now, do we have other things on the list or did, um, yeah, we just wanted to go over like general fall winter safety tips. Okay. Perfect. Do you have some stuff like that for us, Wendy? I do, courtesy of um, Chief Ken McCormick. All right, <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Uh, we'll, we'll go with your lead. Okay, so basically, daylight savings will be happening in about seven weeks. So mm-hmm. he has done something to inspect your uh, smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. He said that you should be changing the batteries twice a year. Um, Mm-hmm. Occasionally vacuum the dust and cobwebs around your detectors. Um, said that the detectors generally last about 10 years. Um, and he said the experts recommend that you replace them after 10, even if they seem to be working fine. Um, he said, refer to the instruction manuals. And if you think that there's a problem with them, absolutely replace them. Mm-hmm. And smoke detectors and carbon monoxide. I can't tell you how many calls we get. Um, each year of people's carbon monoxide detectors going off that would, you know, would save a life if, had they not, you know, th- it would be tragic had they not gone off. Yeah. So I want to make a comment about this and I was going to talk to Ken about it tonight, uh, Chief McCormick. I, mm-hmm. I really want to talk to him about this. And similar to me asking, do you get an opportunity, the police department get an opportunity to go into the schools and talk to the kids about And that's, I do want to actually ask more questions about that. Like, do we have like a drug officer and, you know, giving kids education on drugs and things too in the school, but my mother, I'm I'm going to throw her under the bus. I know she's not listening, but she, um, lives in one of the housing, right? Mm -hmm. So she's in an apartment and the other night she heard the smoke detector go off. It was chirping and it woke her up. So in like, she's telling me this story as if it's okay. Like this is the thing that amazed me. She would looked exhausted. Oh, I didn't sleep a wink last night. I heard it chirping. So like, I just listened for fire engines. Oh my goodness. I'm like, wait, what? And then she's like, well, then it stopped. So, you know, I just, you know, I just laid there for a while, but then I heard it do it again. So I went out to the living room and I, I listened again to see if I heard fire engines. And I, I'm literally sitting there with my mouth wide open. Like, I, I don't know, you know what I mean? And again, like what I, she, again, she's almost 80. So like, I'm guessing like 
like, do they, she forgets things? Like, you, you know that you're supposed, when a fire alarm goes off, you sort of go off. Was it going off, off or, or was, was, it, it was it Well, it was sort of chirping, but she wasn't sure if it was going off. Oh. So just the mere fact that she wasn't sure. Yeah. Like, okay, well, maybe it's May- an Maybe, like, she wasn't sure because yeah. she maybe hasn't heard the fire alarm go off, so she isn't sure what it sounds like. Yeah. And there have been incidences in her building where someone puts food on and leaves and mm-hmm. potentially, yeah. So- it was three times. So you know what she did the third time? She went into her bedroom and got herself an overnight bag and was waiting for the fire department to tell her if she had to leave, if they came, that they would tell, what? certainly would tell her to leave. And she, this is, I don't know where I was going to go. I wouldn't wake you up that late at night. And I was like, mom, wake me up. Like, wake me up. But more importantly, just get go outside and call me. So is that, is that sort of concerning to you? Like my mother's pretty bright, you know what I mean? Like, but that, that you know what, common sense, she doesn't want to bother uh, anybody. That, that that's, again? we would never have a problem if someone called either the business line or 911. If it's a, if it's an, a, you know, if it's important to them, it's important to us. Uh, we, all the time we go out to things and it's nothing, or we can tell somebody we just have to replace the battery or, you know, sometimes it is something. Yeah. And that's what I mean. It's like two o'clock in the morning, chances are, and hopefully you're not too busy anyways, but I'm sure that there's somebody out on patrol or some, you know what I mean? That somebody could go, but the thought, like it made me very nervous to think that our senior community doesn't want to they, be, they don't want to be a burden yeah, and they don't want to bother anybody that she was literally waiting, listening for fire engines to know if her building was on fire. And oh, that's the other thing I said. I was like, mom, if that goes, like, if you hear that and you think it goes off, you need, she goes, no, I sniffed around and I didn't smell anything and it wasn't warm in my apartment. Oh my goodness. But that doesn't mean it's not warm in somebody else's. You know? it, that's what I said. I said, so I in a building. Yeah. It's you live like in a, a building. It's with, not a standalone unit. Yeah. I was like, well, it doesn't mean it's not like flaming hot, like uh, underneath you. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I wanted to actually mention, I almost called uh, chief McCormick about that because Maybe that is something that, you know, maybe over at the community, I mean, the uh, Council on Aging, maybe that is something as just a reminder to them. Please. So that's a great idea. We, um, we actually just talked about scams with the elderly and we're going to, we're going to put our elderly liaison officers on that, you know, go over and speak to them. And this would definitely be a good talking point with them. And they, they never bother us. Never, ever, ever. So, you know, yeah. we're abundantly clear. Yeah, good. I'm glad that I brought that up because again, it made me sort of sad, but it also made me question her ability to like, and she's fine. Like, honestly, she drives, she's, isn't she? She's she's very independent, very, very independent. And to just think that that common sense level sort of left because she didn't want to bother anybody. Mm -hmm. So anyways, or seven over here. Yeah. And so to all of our listeners, I'm sure that we're not speaking directly to you, but if you have an elderly parent or neighbor or somebody like that, maybe even just reach out to them and just say, Hey, you know, we just heard this story on WATD and Sharon was actually quite surprised that this is how her mother responded to it. Just so you know, you can always call the fire department. You can always call the police department. You can always call me as your neighbor, you know, as I'll come over and just, you know, check it out, but call call me from outside. That's the part that worried me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's assume the worst first. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so I'm glad that I got that out. Sorry to make it all about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's important. Yeah. No, I, I thought it would be a good thing for the senior center to sort of talk to, you know, our seniors about. Okay, mm-hmm. go ahead. Um, anything else about smoke detectors? Well, I was just thinking because you got on that topic, I wonder with COVID last year and the kids not being in school, they didn't do like stop, drop and roll safety you know, um, and I wonder if they'll start doing that again, but that obviously is more of a question for, um, I Ken ever remember doing that. Oh my gosh. Do you, oh do? yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I got the badge. I every remember time. having I to quickest. jump out, out of the bus. Like you yeah. get in and you jump out of the bus, but I don't remember like the whole stop, drop and roll thing. Oh yeah. Well, that was, I was an um, expert. That was, um, uh, Van Dyke. What was his name there? Wasn't it a commercial on TV? Wendy? Yeah. I'm a lot older than you, but do you remember that commercial? <laughs> oh, I remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Melissa are just staring at each other like, yeah. yeah. So can I go back to the question about the, the police department yeah. in Pembroke and with going drug awareness and, you know, going to the schools? I know you weren't doing that because of COVID and hopefully things will get on track for you guys uh, where we can start initiating some of that stuff. But like who is giving drug awareness type programs right now for the kids to understand? 
Well, so right now, as I said before, we only have um, Officer Kirby in the schools. Um, we normally have a, uh, a dare camp over the summer, but again, this year um, we didn't participate in it because of COVID mm -hmm. and we hope to, you know, be back into it next year. It's a week long school for, I believe um, it's actually a camp for sixth and seventh graders. And I think Christopher McNamara did it. My nephew did it. My godson. So I still had, sorry, go ahead. I still have my dare shirts from St. Margaret's <laughs> <laughs> from, from seventh and eighth grade. It, so COVID really yeah, has right. impacted a lot of things that we haven't even really like hit upon. You know what I mean? It's just like, it seems like, you know what I mean? You yeah. don't even think about these things where in order for them to be, you know, for the kids, for, for the police department, obviously the police department has to be protected not to get COVID and everything because their job is bigger than some, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so it is, it's weird to think about it right now. All of the things that were norm, mm. not necessarily being the norm anymore. Are you having to wear masks in the station? Not right now. Um, it's not required in public buildings here. Okay. What about when, if you like pull someone over? Do you have no, because you're outside mm -hmm. and you, um, you know, you're not generally with somebody for more than 15 minutes within six feet of them. So yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Oh, I have a question. I saw someone get pulled over the other day. I was just curious. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I, are you getting people who are calling the police station? This is just so now we're getting a little silly because it's getting <laughs> late and um, I've been doing this starvation diet called uh, intermittent fasting. So I'm a little silly right now, but do you get people calling the police department saying I went into so-and-so and they didn't have a mask on? Like are people doing that type of stuff? Last year when it was, when there was a mandate, but not, not lately. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Last year. Last that was a last year question. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought of it now though. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, all right. Getting back to safety ladies. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, so anything else with the smoke detectors? I feel like we sort of went over that part. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about like changing the batteries twice a year, right? Okay. Yep. Um, can we talk about like uh, the, your car, like safety with your car with the with the winter and fall months? So um, something uh, that uh, Ken McCormick had forwarded to us that I was reading earlier was um, th about your windshield wipers. So it's like the, one of the least expensive parts of your car, but one of the most important parts of your car is your windshield wiper. Again, had like a blonde moment today. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty <laughs> smart. <laughs> it's like, it's the, one of the least expensive parts of your car, but one of the most important because you can't see out of your yep, windshield 100%. without your windshield wipers going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that is actually, if you have some other tips too, Wendy, I'm thinking about like when it snows and things like that, like what are the requirements for people who have a lot of snow on their roof? That's mm. a good one. Thank you. Yeah. It's called so you have it to you have to completely clear your car of all snow so that it doesn't come off onto someone else, cause a hazard. Um, we want you to keep an emergency kit in your car um, just so, you know, if you ever break down, you have, um, you have blankets, you might have um, something that will help start your car. You might have food, water, um, an extra charger, um, you know, maybe a battery charger because you wouldn't be able to um, generally do it if your car had died. Mm -hmm. um, have re reflective clothing in the car as well. Mm, that's on my list. I used to, I used to have like a, go, like a little go bag or a little go box in the back of my car. But when, for some reason, when I switched over to the, uh, the Hyundai, which was two years ago, I never put it back in. I never like redid mm -hmm. it, but I always, always, always had one. Cause I was terrified. I would be able yeah, to like, break down kit. alone. Yeah. See, but then there's a part of me that feels like if I did break down on the side of the road and it was pitch black out, like, I just want to keep it that way. Like I'll just get in the woods and continue walking. I'll call, well, I'm not going to put a reflector on my back and let it, like stranger danger know that I'm by myself. Well, that's the point of having the backup charger so you can charge your phone so you can call somebody and say, Hey, I'm on the side of the road <laughs> or, or have jumper cables. So you can, well, I wouldn't know how to do that down anybody. No. It is, but I do think, I mean, what is the best suggestion for if you're a young woman by yourself in a car or a young man, and you're just nervous about getting out? I mean, you can just, I guess you can call, well, if you don't, if you have your cell phone, you can call 911. Yeah, of course. I mean, if you're, like I said, if, if it's an emergency to you, it's, it's an emergency to us, especially a young person or an elderly person, just look at somebody out there. 
Yeah, and I know that you that you truly do mean that in the the police department because when we used to have our office, like I feel very very safe now. Our office is in you know Pembroke Center, so I see you guys are always patrolling around here all the time. But when our office was up on um, Scusic Street, I was always nervous because it's like right off the highway. Mm. Remember one night somebody like came knocking at the door, and I was like in this fishbowl and. He was asking me a question. Do you remember that? Yeah, and I called, was just, yeah, you yeah. I, was I was like, like don't call me, call the cops. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is strange. It's, you know, 1130 PM and you're knocking on a door. Cause I was there all the time, but there were times I was nervous and I would just call and just say, Hey, if any of anybody's in the car, if they could just like drive through the parking lot while I run to my car. Yeah. Um, but that's another good tip. I think actually is because what happened there is during daylight savings, like the lights weren't didn't go on at the right time. You know what I mean? So it was dark in the parking lot before the lights came on. So that's where we are right now. So like my lights at my house are set to come on at eight o'clock, but it's already dark by then. So, uh, change those. Go ahead. Did you have other things too? Sorry. Oh, well, uh, hold on. I gotta go through my thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. obviously don't drive while distracted. Mm -hmm. (laughs) How do we get back to driving? Are we still in driving? Well, I don't know. I was going back to the car. Oh, a tire pressure, inspector tire pressure. That's pretty. Well, are these some items that uh, Wendy that you gave us? Uh, this is what Ken gave us. Oh, okay. Go ahead, yes, Mary. The in the cold weather, um, tends to um, deflate, and that that's happened to me a lot lately. So just make sure <laughs> your tire pressure is, you know, whatever it says on the inside of your door. It's usually like anywhere between thirty and thirty-five. Um, it happens to me all the time. And I never, I never know. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Mm. When, when one goes, the other one goes like, I'm like, I fill up this one. And then the next one goes like, okay, you guys are just playing with me now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, we only have five minutes left of the show. Okay. So, um, anything else you guys want to talk about with safety in regard to, to anything, anything safety? Well, I just think that the, like the fireplace inspector fireplace, I think that that's an important one. If it needs to be cleaned, I know Ken put that on his list usually with us fire pit safety. I think we're past, are we past the burning permit time? Like, I don't even know, but I I don't think we should be burning dry leaves at any time soon. (laughs) So Wendy, are there anything, any items, whether it's something that Ken gave us or something from the, from the police department that you would like to get across to our listeners when it comes to safety or just anything in general? Um, I think finally, just about your car battery, if you haven't um, changed it in a while, it's important because you will end up stranded somewhere. So um, you can bring it to you know, like eight app and have them test it. And if you need a new one, just uh, go ahead and do it because you will end up on the side of the road stranded somewhere. Wonderful. And then this one wasn't on our list, but I was talking to Ken about, um, we always have a pumpkin carving contest. So we were just wondering, is trick or treat happening this year? And then I thought that he mentioned that maybe you are involved in something for Halloween. Maybe is the town doing something or some type of, he said something, maybe not. No. Um, so- as far as I'm concerned, it's my favorite holiday. I would never cancel it. <laughs> so Pima has had, you know, we, we have not canceled anything. Um, I do know that there are some trunk of treats going to be going on, but I don't have any plans other than maybe going to that on the 30th at uh, Assembly of God. Okay. Is there, yeah. Was there something about like touch a truck or something that was going to, is that something was going on that he was telling me about that you were coordinating. So I don't know what he was talking about, but he's like, Oh, reach out to Wendy. And I was like, okay. So I don't know. We'll have to ask him tomorrow what he was talking about. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm looking forward to it if they are doing something. (laughs) So if you love Halloween, you're going to love our, uh, what every year we have a contest and we give out gift cards. What do we give out? Like a hundred dollar gift card for the winners. Yeah. 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 Amazon or, um, American Express, American Express gift cards, like for a hundred dollars and wow. it's a pump, yeah, pumpkin yes. carving contest. And we do an adult contest and a, a, and children. a children. So we have two winners every year. Yes. I'm entering so hard. Yeah. And then what we'd like to do is we, we, last year we couldn't as much just because of COVID, but we'd love to like line them up on like our, um, on our farmer's porch and on the stone wall outside. So we can like have everything all lit up for us, uh, for Halloween, which falls on a Sunday this year, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, any other last thoughts, uh, Wendy, that you want to share with us? No, I just want to say thank you. It's so nice to see you again. And um, 
I look forward to seeing you hopefully again soon. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I really do appreciate you uh, coming in and I don't know what that says because I have my glasses on. <laughs> What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do appreciate you uh, coming again. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable uh, with our team. And we were very fortunate tonight to have Lieutenant Wendy LaPierre. I love saying your name. I hope I'm saying it right because it sounds great when it rolls off my lips. <laughs> um, you know, to have you with us. And again, as I said at the beginning, it's so nice. Like your reputation is so wonderful. And I hope that you know that, um, that mm. everybody in our community really just has very, very, very very high regard for yeah. you and everything that you do for our town. So I've been here for 29 years. So a big portion of you being in our police department. And I just wanted to personally thank you for everything that you do for our town. So thank you. Yeah. I just actually had a conversation about Wendy. I had never met her in person, but uh, <laughs> I just had a conversation with somebody who used to be on the Pembroke uh, police department and he had everything, but everything nice to say high about praise. you. High, high praise. 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 So, so. You do us proud. You really do. So I have goosebumps right now. So thank you so much for all of that. And if you're ever in the area and you need a water or uh, a bubbly, you come on in here and we will, uh, you can help yourself to the fridge. Mi casa, su casa, my friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, one thing that we do want to talk about real estate real quick. Um, I know John's going to kick us off the air real quick, but um, our team has a new listing that is going to be coming live tomorrow. Uh, it is 54 Winds Drive in Pembroke, and that is um, a beautiful cape, um, sort of sort of contemporary style cape. Uh, from the outside, it looks like a ranch. Don't let this cape fool you. Marshfield, WBMS Brockton. The South Shore's first choice for live team coverage of I'll keep on going news, for the people emergency on traffic and so severe we're weather. We're off WATD, but you can um, find out more about that listing at TostingConnect.com. So we will be live just tomorrow. Just by saying play WATD. Uh, no, because he shut us off. Yeah, so the Petito off. case. The remains have been positively identified. Governor visits Del Rio, where migrants have masks. The Biden administration is doing nothing to secure our border. President Biden promises UN relentless diplomacy. Back at the table. This is the CBS World News Roundup Late Edition. I'm Jennifer Kuiper in Chicago.